Guillermo Rigondeau is back with a first round knockout over Giovanni Delgado. Delgado wasn't in any kind of good physical condition. He'd lost his last four fights in a row and he stayed down in a corner near the end of the first round after taking a left hand to the nose. Didn't really look like he wanted to know much more. An opponent very much below the caliber, the kind of fighter Rigondeau is. Now it kind of came out of nowhere, uh, the fight that is, and uh, him announcing his comeback. We haven't heard from Rigondeau in a long time since that, you could say kind of shameful loss to Lomachenko. A lot of people think he quit. It's a, it's a harsh word to use, but I'm kind of I'm more along those lines of thinking rather than the, the injury alibi because he was just getting outboxed and played with, wasn't he? He didn't really take a beating, and I think he pulled the plug in that fight before he actually did take a beating. Now, it kind of reminded me of what Kel Brook did when he went to face Golovkin. Their careers had a period of stagnation where they weren't really fighting anybody, not deserving of their talents, particularly with Ringendow. So he goes and tries to make up for lost time by trying to do the impossible. It was looked great on paper. You had the double Olympic champions, and of course, skill-wise, they were both amazing, but... Lomachenko's size differential uh, just, and just how brilliant he was skill-wise that his in-and-out footwork really threw off Rigondeau who's more low output and all he could do was just get into that annoying crouch which stopped Lomachenko really landing clean but he was completely disengaged. It was a bad performance. He has addressed it when asked recently and just said that look he was just a better guy so fair play but it wasn't a good uh, look for him. Now of course he kind of both made his name and broke it at the same time with his win over Nonito Donaire. It is one of the best wins in recent history, that greater outpointing of, of the Philippine. He did really well in that fight and comparatively for regular Rigondeau fights, it wasn't that boring either. It was, he threw a lot of good sharp left hands in there, got decked himself, then came back and finished strong. But after that, there were a lot of what's going on performances. He was the best super bantamweight in the world and you had the other Jackal Cole Frampton. He didn't really want to know anything about it. Back when Barry McGuigan was managing, they didn't want to get in the ring with Rigondeau. Scott Quigg, now those guys knew they were going to get played with. So it was a little bit unlucky, you know, bad management, bad matchmaking, whatever, you know, it led to the Lomachenko fight. And now here we are. Now he said, after this victory, you haven't seen nothing yet. And that would be great to believe it. But let's see if he can at least start to make up with a good win and help us forget the Lomachenko debacle.